Welcome to the third module of Variable Valve Timing 101 sponsored by Cloys. In this next module, we're going to find out how to diagnose and repair variable valve timing systems. Now we know how they work and also how they can fail. Now we're going to find out how to service a vehicle and return it to like new condition. Joining us today is Cody Smith from Cloys. Let's get started. Welcome back to T2U sponsored by Summit Racing. This is the third module of the Variable Valve Timing course, and it's sponsored by Cloys. And today we're talking about what you need to understand when the system goes bad and what you need to do to repair the system to get it back to the customer in working order. With me is Cody Smith, and we're talking in the third module about your diagnostic strategy. Hey Cody, I got a question for you. You got an oil control valve, you got an ECM, and you've got a phaser, how does it know that it made the correct adjustment for the vehicle? Are there any sensors involved? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the camshaft sensors are, you know, the most critical sensor, you know, for the computer to know that the VVT system is, is functioning as, as it should. Um, so the computer is sending a pulse width modulation signal to, to the solenoids, uh, which is then, you know, uh, sending oil, oil pressure to the phasers in the, in the correct chambers. Uh, which is causing the camshafts to either advance or retard. Um, and then in return, the camshaft sensor is going to read uh, where the camshafts are and, you know, and make sure that they're, they're where they should be. So if the computer is not seeing that the camshafts are, are clocked properly or timed properly, uh, that's when it's going to trigger that code. And those codes are constantly being set and it's constantly measuring that when the engine's running. Yep, absolutely. So if a sensor goes bad, would that lock the system into basically a passive mode? It, it can, yeah. Once again, it just it depends on the, the application at hand. So as a technician, I mean, a timing system repair, bare minimum on some most vehicles, it's going to be a $1,000 bill at least, up to $2,000. And you were mentioning before about the GM High Feature V6. How many hours does that take to do the chains? So some vehicles with the high feature V6 uh, require almost 15 or over 15 hours of labor uh, because it requires the whole cradle be dropped out of the vehicle. Um, so when you're when you're working on repairs like that, it, it only makes sense to replace all the components while you're in there. If, if you're going to go through the hassle of dropping, if you're going to pay the price of them dropping the whole cradle out, taking the front cover off the front of the engine, you might as well replace all the timing system components while you're there uh, with VVT system components. Uh, because if you fail to replace some of those components, you're gonna be paying more in the long run to have that, that service done again, to, to get to the point where you can do that service. And that's another 15 hours to lower the engine on the cradle. Exactly, exactly. So we talked about this before, when they have the options of different repair paths, bare minimum, you could just replace a camshaft phaser. But on some engines, you need to really look at the timing chain and recommending that full system replacement may be the best bet for the customer. What should they be looking for when they estimate out the job? Yeah, if you have the timing cover off or, or, the, or the valve cover off and you can see the timing chain, um, a great way to measure timing chain fatigue is gonna be tensioner extrusion. You know, when the tensioner is brand new, it's, it's going to barely be sticking out of the tensioner housing and putting pressure onto the chain. Uh, once the chain fatigues, you're going to see that tensioner, you know, uh, sticking, you know, much further out of the housing. Uh, so it's going to tell you that, that that chain is at the end of its fatigue life. Um, you know, guide wear is another, you know, great way to, to you know, determine the health of the timing chain system. Uh, if you see any kind of deep grooving in a chain guide, uh, you know, that's going to be a tell, telltale sign of, of chain system fatigue. So you have timing chain stretch, you have a damage guide. Good chances are that the variable valve timing system is going to need a replacement too. Yeah, absolutely. And once again, if you're going to spend, if the customer is going to spend the labor to get the vehicle to that point, uh, it's really an injustice to them to not, you know, recommend service of all the components while they're there. GM, front wheel drive vehicle comes to your shop. It's got a cam and crankshaft correlation code in it. And chances are the timing chain is stretched. What are the next steps to do this job and even the estimate for the customer? Well, the estimate is going to involve a lot of hours. Um, you know, in some applications with this engine, it requires 15 hours of labor just to, to get to the timing components. 
Um, so it's definitely a scenario where it's an injustice to the customer not to recommend a, a complete system replacement while they're there. Um, you know, full timing system with VVT components would be ideal. Another scenario, I'm going to put you on the spot here. Ford F-150, 5.4, number of years it was in that vehicle. Let's say it's a 10-year-old truck. Mm -hmm. It's got maybe 150,000 miles on it now, and it's coming to your shop with a rattle in it. What would be your way to get another 150,000, maybe even 200,000 miles out of that valve train system? Uh, a complete timing system replacement uh, with VVT phasers would, would be what I would recommend. Uh, the, the Cloy's timing kit actually has a kit com complete with the components and the VVT phasers. And Cloy's actually upgraded the phasers for that application uh, with a tightly tolerance, long duration rotor. Um, so that changed the design, the, the factory design, which used a, a thin uh, vein, which can wear and actually uh, there's friction between the rotor and the stator. Uh, the, update, the updated Cloy's design is a, is a frictionless design, so it actually works better with less oil pressure than, than the original design phasers do. Um, so for high, higher mileage engines, uh, that, that is the ideal repair. So in other words, that 150,000 mile truck that may not have the greatest oil pump on it can now have the same performance it had when it was new. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm going to give you a time machine. And this time machine can only go back and you could run into yourself your first, second year as a technician. What would you give yourself, both advice and tool wise, to help them be more confident in performing these types of repairs and number one, recommending them to a customer? Well, number one is training. Seek out every bit of training you can. Uh, you need to have a great understanding on, on the systems that you're working on. Um, application specific training, uh, much like you can find on our, our website, we do full installation videos uh, for the application that you may be working on. Uh, so that's very important training around, you know, individual applications. Also use good quality components and for timing systems in particular, you know, replace all timing components while you're in there. Um, you know, don't make the decision for the customer, you know, provide the customer uh, the information you have and let them make the decisions on, on, you know, what to do. Also use high quality components and take a full system approach uh, during the repair. This includes the timing chain, the phaser, and also guides and chains and also tensioners. Yeah, absolutely. You know, going back to the time machine thing, what would you provide yourself website wise to have to service automobile systems? Well, if we're servicing timing systems, I would, I would love the Cloy's website because we've got full installation videos on, on multiple applications that walk you through step by step. And you also have the instruction sheets on there too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know what? I just wish I would have had the internet when I first started being a technician. So that concludes the third module on variable valve timing for T2 University, sponsored by Summit Racing. And this module is sponsored by Cloy's. Next up, we have a few questions for you to answer to complete this course and get your certificate.